We're at a Hillsborough Inlet today. Beautiful Lighthouse Point. This is the time of year to go after big bottom fish swallow. I had to take a swallow. <laughs> I just was like some chapstick on, getting ready to roll out the inlet. But today, hopefully targeting bottom fish. That's the goal. Around the reef, hopefully get some nice snappers and groupers, and then maybe even bottom fish way out deep in like eight, 900 feet of water. Yes, we got some good intel that the mountains are biting. And so we got all our rigs and uh, heading out to the right now. Let's get, go let's get to it, Sizzle. Okay guys, we bought some pilchards this morning. We went and tried to catch some pilchards on the beach with not too much luck. And now we are set up and we're chumming close to shore for ballyhoo, which is another excellent bait when you want to bottom fish, particularly like the mutton snapper spawn and even catching groupers. Everything loves to eat a ballyhoo and pilchards too. So we have our chun slip out. I don't know if you guys can see that over there floating just behind the bow about 20 five feet away is a water bottle connected to our bally hoop is what we're using and you'll see here in just a second I'm hopefully gonna catch a ton of them in this net it's a really cool device yeah put some b-roll here we caught a bunch of this bunch earlier but we had to move because we got too deep and uh, we just kind of reset we actually have enough bait key is more chum usually there's no current so we're drifting Ballyhoo, just like any other fish, like they're just spooky. So it takes like a minute for them to like get comfortable between you, between the boat and the net. Cause that net is kind of, they do see that. With no current like this, they're usually more skittish, more spooky about feeding and whatnot. So you gotta like, just take your time and be patient with them. Five. I feel like a dozen. No, like five. No. Six. Six, seven. That's not a dozen, <laughs> either way. There's like, it's overcompensating. All right, did okay there. You gotta get them right in the water. They're dying already. You gotta keep swimming. Swimming, swimming. Is this guy died in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's take out the ones that died. All right, we're back in the rip. Look at them all, look at them all. It's right here. I could throw the net on them. <laughs> Incredible. Ugh. That's so frustrating, but we got them, we got them. <laughs> we got them. All right, we just anchored up, getting set. Don't you think she has a little fish on? I do. That's something. It is definitely something. It's oh. the biggest blue run I've ever oh witnessed. Oh my lord! <laughs> oh, Look at the size I am of that blue, blue runner. runner queen of the summer months. Look at that thing. That's Jesus a monster. monster. Okay, that's a good sign though. I instantly caught a fish within two seconds of dropping a bait to the bottom. Yeah. So that I like that. I like that a lot. That's a monster. Caught it on a $3 pilchard? Yep. <laughs> sure did. Well, that's okay. So we're up the Dania Pier. The Miami Martin man told us to come down here. Some of the boats oh, here. Pulling them out. Jeez. They look like they know what they're doing. So we're going to have to see how it goes. Okay. And once I catch a, a decent fish on this, of course, I explain the rig and we'll go over everything with you guys. But first, let's catch a fish on this. Yes. I'm using live ballyhoo and Darcy is using live pilchards. Definitely break that beak. I did already. Good. Come on. Mine too. Nice. Let's see. You steady reel and see if it gets tight. There he is. Yeah. He's gotta be there. No? No. Maybe. Huh. He just come up this way. Weird. Swing. You think you got a fish now? I think maybe something. Very weird. We don't know if we have a fish on or not. It's a shark. Oh, Jesus. Shit. Maybe it is. He doesn't no spots. Nice throw. Yeah. All right, here you go. All right, we just repositioned our anchor. And we know the, the mutton spawn is going on this time of year. Everybody's catching big, big muttons. And we see him. So far, it seems like we might have picked the wrong day to be out here. <laughs> be out here for it. But that's why it's called fishing, because like every day, you know, it changes out here. But there's mo there's multiple boats right along, up and down this reef. And everybody's fishing for them. Everybody's anchored up. So we know we're in the right area. It's just a matter of, like, where are the fish? And hopefully they bite. So he just got a bite. I'm going to reel up mine, because I'm sure my bait's gone. Yeah, so kind of felt like she got a bite. So the other place we got no bites for a while. So, so yeah. you got a fish on? Wait, is that a fish? You're a knucklehead. Nope, 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 nope. I think the way it was just hung up on the right. bottom. Yeah. Mm. 
You have a fish? Yes. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Bring my damn glove on you. Oh, watch out. You dropped the leader in the water because it's so darn long. What is that? <gasps> That's what we want. Oh. A grouper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the color and I was like getting excited. Oh God, are you sure? It was a snapper. Right color because grouper and snapper are always pretty. And that's a beautiful little red snapper right there. Yes. I mean, sorry, red snapper. Red grouper. Red grouper? I think you can swim down or are you going to sequelize them? Well, let's sequelize them real quick. Yeah, we should have that right We there. should have that out right now anyway. Please. Yes. All right, so this fish is suffering from borrowed trauma. You can see his stomach is in there. It's expanded. Actually, his swim bladder has expanded and pushed his stomach out from coming out through different atmospheres. So we're going to take our sequelizer, our fish descending device, which you should have on your boat. All right, we're going to clip it on there. Now this is a pressure release system valve and I have it set at like, I think it's 100 feet, maybe 50 feet. And uh, now in the old days, we used to poke them. Oh, yes. to let them down with this rod. You're supposed to have the rod ready all the time. So that's what the FWC rules are. I, pre I, I know up north, I'm not totally sure right here, but it's a good practice anyway. So in the old days, you used to stick them in the side. Uh, so he just came off. And then when the fish comes off, the weight just goes to the bottom. So you can really tell. So again, sticking them in the side, leaves off, puts a hole in the fish, and of course they can get infected from that. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below that you can get this whole thing for free, like $100 worth of descending device free. It's like Florida Gulf Anglers, but you go on the website and make sure you qualify, and and, you, and Darcy and I got our free stuff, and I'm using it right now. So really great, and you see the jaw is opened and released the fish. And we don't see him floating anywhere. I, I mean, I would edit that out anyway, but we don't, he's not floating anywhere. All right, so good job saving that grouper for when he gets bigger. There you go. You got on, you're on, you're on. Like I'm get on. him up, get him up, get that fish up. He thinks he's on. I am on. So these are really weird bites that we're getting. You said it about the other thing too. It's red. Fish. Aha. Uh -huh. Got a rock and a mutton? Yeah. That's going to uh -huh. be a keeper, actually. That is going to be a keeper. It's totally my fault. Um, me just leadering up that fish, I accidentally kind of looped his leader by accident. Oh, but whatever. I will fix it right now. I'm so sorry. But Brian got a keeper fish in the boat! No! He swallowed that, too. Holy cow. Let me pop him real quick so you can show him the camera. He's gonna be about 21. I'll get that out there. I'll get that out of his mouth. I mean. 19 and a half. Yep. I'm not talking. I didn't catch it. All right, guys. I put the rigor reusables. I'll stay in the bottom rig. Anchored up in 100 feet of water off the Daniel Pier. You know, we took our boat, oh, we drove our truck <laughs> and our Ford with our load. 30 miles. Yeah. Then we went 15 miles. Yeah, then we went 50 miles south on the ocean and we anchored up down here and you know, the, took the Ford and take the South Florida Ford and the uh, Road King trailer. Road King trailer. Everything goes really smooth, but you know, we took an adventure to get this darn fish. And he caught this. You're going to caught that. They're probably going to catch 15 of them out of Boynton today, but whatever. Oh my God. Look how <laughs> so negative, negative he is. So negative. This is what I deal with, guys. I know. 19 and a half. Perfect eating size. They all look the same on a fork. Brian is fishing all my grunts that I caught today. And he's catching all the fish right now. Caught one fish. We need to go back and catch more grunts. So, like we always talk about, like we spend time in the morning looking for bait in the summer because we have bait here this time of year, but it's good to have a variety. As you know, the saying goes, fresh hook, fresh baits, sharp hooks. So we got our sharp hooks, so you gotta have the fresh baits too. And of course, we have a bunch of dead bait from recent offshore trips. So we caught, we got the pilchards this morning that we bought. Caught Ballyhoo, and then I kept dropping a sabiki down, and I caught some grunts, which are also excellent for mutton snappers. All right, our sizzle. Yeah, that's a fish. Nice. Darcy is reeling. She got the Miami Mountain Man rod. These are Miami Mountain Man rod spots, everything. Woo! All right. Yes, I am. This is my lucky Miami Mountain Man combo, actually. Yes. Woo! Still swimming what a little we got? bit. What do we got? Not what sure. do we got? Looks like a grouper. It's another grouper. Chased Incredible. by a shark. It's probably the same fish. 
another red All grouper. Right. You can see the barrel trauma on this one too. It's getting yeah. real wet and this stung is sticking out there. So now we got the thing ready, we're just gonna put them right on. Exactly. Now send we're doing a high level. Send them right back down to the bottom and uh, you know, you gotta take respect to all the fish, whether they're keywords or not. Right back down fast as possible. Minimize the trauma. And just like, you know, even a fish that's suffering from barrow trauma, same exact deal. You do not want to keep them out of the water for long. You want to immediately get them back down. Okay, that's shark number two on the boat. We do not like that. That's usually a bad sign for the fish fishing on the bottom when the sharks are eating your baits. Shark launch. Sharknado. What is that show? Flying? Sharknado. Sharknado. <laughs> that was the ride of his life. Another shark! So, back to back sharks. That's no bueno. We are going to get the heck out of here. We got a lot of bycatch of sharks today, bottom fishing on the reef. One after the other. You know, we came down here because someone said it might be good. The only time we fished here, we did okay. Well, Darcy did. Darcy schooled the boys last time we came out here. Caught like three muttons and the guys caught none. But... That was a while ago. It was a long time ago. So I think we're going to make a major move. So, you know, we're always out of trying to get better. Like, Darcy teaches us a competition, like, you know, trying to get a faster mile time, trying to be better at fishing, try different spots, get more spots. I thought it was a good plan today, honestly, and you didn't ever, you didn't even say you didn't want to. And now that we're out I here. I think it is, I thought it was a good plan. And now that we're out here, Brian's like, we should have stayed in Boyan, we should have stayed here. 2020 hindsight. You know, we always say that, you know, just like any fishing, but when we go fishing the night before, we have talks all about what we're gonna do and where we're gonna go and all this stuff, because we have so many places and opportunities, we're that blessed that we can do whatever we want. Because the Road King trailers. Yeah, like go north, <laughs> go south. Because of our reliable Go to the Florida Keys, go to Hillsboro, go to Boynton, go to Palm Beach. Yeah. Fort Lauderdale, where we are now, government cut right behind us. Yeah, we're right on the Daniel Pier, like I mentioned before. So let's make a major move. I don't want to move a mile or two miles from here. I want to make a distant move. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna go back, we'll go up back to the Hillsboro area. Yeah. I don't know if he's on yet. You're on. Get him, Brian. Hooked up, hooked up, hooked up. Oh, he's taking a nice line. Come on, crank, baby, crank. Trying to get it up. Big mutton. Big mutton. He has swallowed it. He oh. swallowed it. That's what happened. Dude! <laughs> That's a nice fish. That's it. It can pop you right there on the corner of their mouth. It can pop you right off. Yep. I thought it was a shark. Dead ballyhoos. Yeah, they want dead ballyhoo. All right, right back down. All it took was a little bit more patience to stay here. So you I think swallow. that's what happened to me. I think I had a mutton on and he popped me off right there at the boat. That fish fought all the way to the yeah, surface. Yeah, only in 82 feet. I honestly said shark. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he's not blown up. No, it looks great. No, he's not blown up. Nice fight on the hand line right there. Nice. Beautiful mutton. That's a nice. How long is 28? Good job. Brian with both muttons now. 26. On 50 pound. He's 25. Literally saw his rod doubling over. He wasn't paying any attention and I told him to get over there. Just spit up Brian's bait and he butterflied that ballyhoo. That's what he wanted. You could have put this on a bait on a bait tray. You had to put it on, on, the, on the marine mat. Send it right back down. All right, we could just leave that hook in there and get it from him later. Yeah. Beautiful fish. We're getting bit, you and me. B. That's one, mine made a thing too. Mine's getting bit, turn it on. I got it on. On. Let's go sizzle. Oh, you're in. Oh, let's go, you got it, you gotta bring it the up. You gotta fish, bring it up. Brian? Put it in two, put it in two. Oh, broke it off, got it off. Got him off. It was my weight stuck. All right, you know we put it in second gear. I'm okay, in first you're right, you're right, you're right. I felt the giving. Okay. Um, I got a while. It felt weird. It is, there's a fish here, it's out here. Okay. What the hell is that? It's a yellowtail. The yellowtail? I think so. Oh, oh yeah, I'll nice take one. it, I'll take it. Yeah, big one, look at the size of that thing. Something was down there. I took one of these and I butterflied it. I'll show you guys in a second. I took a ballyhoo and I felt little bites and nitpicks on it. And then it just got smoked by this really nice yellowtail snapper. That's a big one, measure them up. 17. 
Just nice. under 17. That's a good size yellowtail, yeah, man. Nice little yellowtail. Nice. Delicious. Yeah, better than that. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna keep them alive in the cool in here. Alright guys, we are back at the house, playing up Brian's big fish. Literally the only fish I put in the cooler was that yellowtail. <laughs> so Brian outfished me once again today, that's okay. So would you say that I caught all the big fish? Yeah. you caught the little baby fish? For sure, for sure. We do they definitely have days like that, where I just don't have that touch and Brian did. So, caught a lot of sharks though, and baby short groupers. <laughs> yeah, you're really good at catching those babies. But you know, again guys, when you anchored, I mean, the rod holder really works really well for me. And you know, putting always says, the only thing you're gonna do by holding the rod is mess something up. <laughs> right. Unless you like bass vision, for like trolling, a lot of times bottom fishing. But uh, we had a great day, it was really long. Really long day, we were exhausted. And, uh, Dog days of summer officially down here. Yeah, it was hot. Very hot. Did it get really windy at the end? I guess with like convection or whatever? Felt great though. It was pretty normal down here, yeah. It and it wasn't good. rough, it was just rough ride a little bit. Well, it was rough because when you're anchored, you know, your front is kind of secured. So it doesn't really bob right. And so it's a, it just feels rougher sometimes. Yeah. You get a little more bouncing. All right, so let's quickly talk about the uh, products we're using though here. So we're not just talking on and on, but I'm quickly getting ready to flay the fish. And just like any knife or any tool out there, you have to take care of them. And I felt my edge on it and it felt not as sharp as I wanted it to be to fillet a tougher fish, such as a mutton snapper. So I just used the fine side. There's a it's a trihone knife sharpener from Smith. They got a coarse diamond, fine diamond, and then an Arkansas stone, which is like just basically smooth out your edges here. So I used the fine diamond side, flipped it over, and now we're using the Arkansas stone, and we're just getting that edge nice and sharp, like a razor, literally. And I do this after every couple fish that I fillet. So I spend time doing this every single day. I had a lot of practice now, taught myself, you know, how to do this correctly. And I kind of, you know, work through different sections of the knife. You, there's all different methods to doing this. I mean, there's a lot of things, but like, for instance, you could do these big long swipes like this, back and forth. But for me, what works is really just like working on one side, flipping it, work on the other side, move the blade down and so forth. And I just kind of work it as I go along and just make sure that edge is sharp. You wanna make sure it's super sharp and keep flipping your knife after every couple of swipes on one side because you wanna keep that edge straight. You don't want it to mushroom to one side. So you've, I've learned this over again over the years. Smith Consumer Products, my sponsor for many, many years now. They are known for their knife sharpeners in the industry. You probably already have one sitting in your house somewhere. Yes. Um, but they have a wide variety of like easy use to use ones to high advanced like the Trihone Sharpener. So I'm gonna take a look at my edge here and I think I'm all now, set. Now the common question go. we're gonna get is how often do you sharp on your edge? Well I just said after every about two, three fish, oh, I go back to the I sharpener and I gotta make sure that I keep it sharp. Like right now I'm feeling the edge, it feels pretty nice. Um, yeah, it just depends on like the species of what I'm filleting. For instance, snappers. I would say after every two, three snappers, I go back to the to the to my stone and sharpen the edge once again because it uh, gets dull quickly. Because they have they have scales bigger scale, so it's gonna dull your edge. Yep. And of course, the more you hit the bones in the fish, it's gonna dull your edge too, so. Correct, so just like any to sharp you know, tool, you gotta to do this. So using the eight inch star sizzle knife today, curved fillet knife, which they've been available for a while now, uh, we'll have the links down below, available in my Amazon store, available on Smith's website, even available on walmart.com, uh, online, I mean, literally just search Dar Sizzle Filet Knife and it'll pop up on Google. And available at what I call elite tackle shops. Yes, certain The highest level elite tackle yes, shops. Yes, but unfortunately carry. not everybody has access to the tackle <laughs> shops. So that's what I'm telling you guys now. But best way to get these is online. So yes. let's go ahead and dive right into this. That pushes me out of the way. Well, he's like in my way. I didn't push you. All right, let's do it. I'm going to go, right? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do all it. All right, all right. I got the camera here with some close up shots. Yep. A little too close up. That's okay. Cut. I cut at an angle into his head, and that way I'm not scraping up and down into the actual scales. Scales, because that blades your, that dulls your knife quicker. And all the way down his back. We're gonna be eating good tonight through the tail. And we did bleed this fish out, by the way. You want to tell him what you did? Oh, I, we cut the gills, and there's a couple ways to bleed fish, but we usually do it the easy way, put them in a bucket, and uh, just cut the gills with a knife, 
You can cut his whole throat. You can pierce like right here, but I just cut the gills and they bleed out. And you gotta do that while they're alive. Um, that means the heart is pumping and will pump out the blood. If you do it when they're dead, they're, there's nothing to pump the blood out. And you can see that meat is very white. Very, very white. And this is where the flex of my knife is coming in. <laughs> Actually, the bottom part of this fish is little, a little, little frozen. frozen. Making it a little tougher, but you see the flex of this blade just literally lets me glide right along those bones. That's where I love the design of my knife because you could just get right up on there and not pretty, not miss a whole lot, honestly. Yeah, because a lot of fish, um, since I'm thin here, see that I got this bone here? I'm gonna do it like, show it like this. This is gonna go up. So if you get the, you're gonna bend the knife under here and then over and then down here. So you're gonna save a bunch of meat in there. Yes, beautiful. All yeah. right, flip it over, do the same exact thing. Yeah, go ahead. What do you think? All right. Sure, let's do it. And Darcy Slab likes it off. To, this is the next day. Darcy likes to cool the fish or get them cold. Uh, in a, in a, you know, and they're a little bit firmer that way and easier to fillet. And quite frankly, it was no reason for us to uh, fillet those fish super late when we got home yesterday afternoon because we were both exhausted and we it weren't about to fillet them and cook fish. We just had a long day. So yeah. for me, instead of it sitting in the fridge overnight, the best way to do it is keep them nice and chilled down in the cooler and it really just uh, really makes them nice and firm and in my opinion easier to fillet and yeah this fish was frozen so I did a good job <laughs> yeah we got yeah like you know we got up at 4 15 yesterday and then we go off the water at like 4 30 and in traffic so we you know we don't get home till like yeah. whatever 5 30. I think if you're a fisherman you understand what we're talking about but yeah there's just so much of not a hassle but just like so much that Work. goes into fishing I mean the work like never ends. And by the time I was done everything with everything yesterday, after we got home, it was like, I don't even know, like it was at least seven o'clock at night. Yeah, before I, I had to get the boat away and the cleaning. So, yep. and then, you know, and then we film all this for you guys. So we just don't have the energy or the time even to clean fish after all that. No, I know it looks a little awkward. I kind of do this with the larger fish, put them up on their side. Yeah. And then I can really get in there. So talk about cooking with pudding. You know, this is a, a snapper. You can cook almost all snapper the same way, and also a mahi. And so she has the skin on right now. So you, that's uh, you could put that on the barbecue, just like uh, a redfish or something like that. So you could just put the skin down on the barbecue, uh, maybe lather it up with some butter or some oil and some herbs and salt and pepper even. And you can uh, maybe throw some tomatoes or lime on there and just cook that up for 10 minutes an inch. You could, uh, we're gonna cut the skin off here and then you can just take that to any way. You can bake that, I, you know, I can do the frying pan a lot. Just butter, salt, and pepper is gonna make this fish taste delicious. Or you can make any of the sauces that I make, you can Google those up. You can make tacos. Oh, we had, you know, usually we make mahi tacos and we don't usually think mahi is the greatest fish in the whole wide world because I guess we're spoiled down here, but you know, it's mahi down here is like flounder up in New York. You know, it's just kind of the standard fish that you find in a restaurant almost. And so, but I, we had my tacos, I mean, uh, mutton tacos recently. Nice, do that circle thing I like. <laughs> you know I love it. Let's see, look at that, look at that guys. How's that, how's that? Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful, and so. Beautiful fish. I took the mutton, I had made mutton tacos, and I fried it up with some coating on it. it the tacos were so much better than my tacos. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. It was really yummy. Yeah, it was so good. And so she's getting the pin bones out right now. Yep. So we're just gonna cook these on the half shell. It's on a, it's barbecue, it's it's, we, it's uh, the summer. We love that barbecues in the summer, so we're just gonna do, do what I just said. We don't have time to do that right now because we're going to ICAST in the morning. So we don't have time to film that. <laughs> By the time they see this, the ICAST is gonna be way over. It's way past ICAST, but, but, okay. but that's what we're doing tomorrow, so we don't have a ton of time. And, uh, and Darcy's also gonna do the cheeks and the collar on this fish. We don't waste any of the meat. And we're gonna put that on Facebook. So guys, follow Darcy on Facebook. We put all kinds of other different types of content on there. Not to mention Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. Right. But uh, check out Facebook. We've got a lot of great how-tos on there. Some of the shorter videos, especially filet videos and collarbone videos. And, uh, and that's it. And that's, that's about it, guys. Be right there. Yep, bro, AKA collar right here. Yeah. And then taking the cheeks out. So we're not gonna miss any piece of this delicious mutton snapper. Yep. You guys always tell me that in my videos every time you see me fillet off the meat and you're always like, you missed the collar, you missed the throat. So <laughs> yeah, they are, they we're not do. today. All right. And you can also, if you, anything you wanna see with Darcy, like if we're not doing the collars on this particular video because it's getting a little long, you can just Google 
garcizzle collars or cheekbones or how to, you know, how to flay out the cheek and you'll definitely find it in two seconds. Yep. All right, there you go. All right, guys, so everything we talked about down below, check out Miami Mutton Man 2. I'll link to the raw we were using today as well. Uh, but until our next adventure. I had to buy another Mutton Man video, uh, reel. I had to buy another reel and another rod because I lost the other one. Yes, but luckily <laughs> Miami Mutton Man was so nice that he gifted me something too. Yes. So thank you. All right. <laughs> I just want to, I just wanted to say that because he might be watching, you know. Ryan just said yes, he had to like, pay for he, it. He so. sponsored her another rod. Yes, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. We love the rods, and he gave us some spinner rods, and we've been using the hell out of them, and we love his rods. So, All right. About to my guys. Until our next adventure, follow your dream. Keep on, Keep on catching. catching.